Hello, Mux Demux fans. I'm Kevin Ripa, and this is my Sans 3 Minutes Max. In a previous episode, we had talked about cases that I had worked where uh, files had been incorrectly identified. And in our example, we were looking at, a, at an image that had been pulled up, and the investigators had incorrectly mapped this back to uh, a file path and another file on the drive, uh, and, and it was incorrect. It, it was foolishly incorrect, but they went ahead with that because that's how they had interpreted the evidence. And so in the next two episodes, I want to talk about how that mistake gets made so that you don't m make that mistake. So here's what it looks like when we're trying to um, look at evidence in a hard drive. We have the master file table, which is at the beginning and certain other parts of the drive, and it keeps track of all of the files and folders on the drive. And then we have the storage space of the drive where all of the data actually sits. So the MFT entries map to uh, certain clusters in the storage space. And this is all kept track of through the dollar sign bitmap file. So here we see a very oversimplified example where the first entry in the MFT is marked as allocated or existing and contains the metadata for a file titled james.docx. The MFT entry indicates that the file exists or at least starts at cluster 12. If we go to cluster 12 on the storage space of the hard drive, we can see the beginning of the james.docx file. Now here we see the second MFT entry. It also shows as being allocated or existing and refers to a file named mschat.dll. It further shows that the file exists in the storage space of the hard drive starting at cluster 13. The third MFT entry is being displayed as empty. In other words, it has never been used. Over in our storage area, we see that cluster 14 is empty and has never been used to store data. These two empty spaces are merely here for my description, have no correlation to each other whatsoever. Here in the fourth MFT record, we see metadata referring to a file called blueberry.txt that lives at cluster 15 in the storage area of the hard drive. The MFT record indicates that the file has been deleted and the MFT entry has not been used for new data. If we go to cluster 15, we can see that the blueberry.txt file still exists in its entirety because that space has not been overwritten by new data. Okay, so now we've set the stage. Now you should be clear about how the MFT uh, points to areas on the hard drive where the data sits. Okay, in the next episode, we're going to see where the mistake starts to be made. But in the meantime, and in between time, that's it. Another episode of 3 Minutes Max.